back students to our second session of chapter 3 physiography and drainage today we will study the physiography of india in detail the following figure shows physiography of india we already know that india is divided into five major physiographic divisions the first division, the Himalayas. Second, the North Indian Plains. Third, the peninsula or the Indian Plateau. Fourth, the coastal plains. And fifth, the island group. The Himalayas act as a natural boundary separating India from a large part of Asia. The formation of Himalayas is very interesting. To begin with, let me tell you that the continents are always moving. They are either sliding across each other or smashing into each other. Around 250 million years ago, all the continents were joined together into a large supercontinent called the Pangaea called the Pangaea and surrounded by a mega ocean called Panthalassa. According to the continental drift theory proposed by Alfred Wegener, the supercontinent continent Pangaea began to split around 200 million years ago. Pangaea first split into two big continental masses known as Gondwana and Laurasia. Laurasia, also known as Angerland, moved northwards and got further divided into today's North America, Europe and North Asia. Gondwana, on the other hand, moved southwards and got further divided into two parts. One became Africa and the other moved southwards. The southward region was further divided into three parts. One moved to south known as Antarctica and the other part that moved away was called Australia and the third part peninsula in shape further moved northwards. This was called India. It kept on moving in the northward direction. It kept on moving in the northward direction and further Africa also got split up into two and then South America was created. India kept on moving to the north till it collided with the North Asian land. The collision was so fierce that the plates collided with each other and gave rise to the Himalayan mountains and the Hind Kush range. And thus India was formed. Even today, even today, India is moving to the north at a speed of 3 to 5 cm per year and so the Himalayas are always increasing in size. And that's the reason the Himalayas are called young fold mountains of the world. The Himalayas in Hindi means the boat of snow. The Himalayas extend from the Pamir North, from the Pamir North in Tajikistan to Arunachal Pradesh in the east. In India, it extends from Jammu and Kashmir. It extends from Jammu and Kashmir to Arunachal Pradesh. The Himalayas in India are divided into two sections that is the eastern 
of the Arunachal Himalayas and the Western Himalayas or the Kashmir Himalayas. This, the Central Himalayas or the Kumon Himalayas are in Nepal. A row of mountains is called a mountain range. The Himalayas have three parallel mountain ranges from south to north are the Shivalik or the outermost Himalayas. The reason why it is known as Shivalik is because when we see it from space, it looks like Lord Shankar's hair or Jada. Then we have the Himachal or the lesser Himalayas. Here it is followed by the Himadri or the Greater Himalayas. The Shivaliks is the youngest mountain range and as we move from south to north, the height of the Himalayas increase. There is a cold desert beyond the Greater Himalayas called the Trans-Himalayan region. Ladakh, Zaskar, Karakoram and Kailash range are located in this region. The North Indian Plains. The North Indian Plains lie between the Himalayas and the Plateau. They lie between the Himalayas and the Plateau or the Peninsular region. It extends from Rajasthan. It extends from Rajasthan and Punjab in the west to Assam in the east. It has become fertile due to the rich silt brought down by the rivers. It is divided into the eastern and the western plains. The north of the western plains are formed by the fertile soil brought by the river Satlij and its tributaries. It lies to the west of the Aravli Hills and Delhi Ranges. The slope of the plain is towards the west. The southern part of the western plain is a dry desert region as the rainfall is scanty and no big rivers flow in this region. It is known as the Thar Desert or the Marusthali. The eastern plain lies to the east of the Aravli and is formed by the fertile soil brought by the river Ganga and its tributaries. Hence, this plain is known as the Ganga plain. It slopes its eastwards. The plains formed by the river Brahmaputra and its tributaries are also a part of these plains. All the rivers flow towards the sea. When they are close to the sea, they move very slowly as they are laden with sediments. They deposit their sediment on the shores, forming small triangular islands of sand. Such an island is called a delta. Such an island is called a delta. Due to delta formation, the rivers also get divided into tributaries or channels. River Ganga, Brahmaputra and Meghna in Bangladesh form the world's largest delta. The Sundarbans is a part of this delta. The Coastal Plains India has a coastline of approximately 7500 km and is surrounded by water on all three sides. It also has coastal plains that lie to the east and the west of the Indian Plateau. To the east and the west of the Indian Plateau, region called Eastern and Western Coastal Plains. The Eastern Coastal, if you see the Eastern Coastal Plains are broader than the Western Coastal Plains. The Western Coastal Plains lies between the western ghats and the arabian sea lies between the western ghats and the arabian sea so this is the western coastal plain it extends from gulf of kutch gulf of kutch to
Kanyakumari in the south. Next, it is broader in the north and narrow to the south. It is broader in the north and narrow to the south. Its width is less. So if you see the width, it is less. Rivers like Tapi, Narmada are short and swift. They are found in this region and they flow into the Arabian Sea forming estuaries. Coastal plains. The eastern coastal plains lie between the eastern ghats. It lies between the eastern ghats and the Bay of Bengal. So this is the eastern coastal plain. Then it extends from Kanyakumari to delta of the river Ganga in West Bengal. It is drained by four major rivers, Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri and they empty into the Bay of Bengal. It's broader than the western coastal plain. So if you see here, it is broader than the western coastal plains. Because of the gentle slope, the rivers flow at a lower velocity and deposit the sediments brought by them at the coast. Hence, deltas are found along this coast. There are few natural harbors because the coastline is not indented, that is not divided. The Indian Peninsula can be divided into two main parts. The Central Highlands in the north and the Deccan Plateau in the south. The Central Highlands include the plateaus of Marwar, Mewad, Malwa, Bundelkhand, Bhagelkhand, Chota Nagpur, etc. The Aravlis are the oldest fold mountain range in India. So this is the Aravli range and it is the oldest fold mountain range in India. The Vindhya range stretches from east to west. The Marwar Plateau lies to the west of the Aravli hills and the Mewad Plateau lies to the east of the Aravli hills. The Deccan Plateau The Deccan Plateau consists of Maharashtra This is Maharashtra Karnataka Plateau and the Telangana Plateau. The region of the Deccan Plateau in the west is higher than in the east. As a result, rivers starting in this in the western ghats flow across the plateau towards the east and empty into the Bay of Bengal. Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri and Mahanadi rivers are such rivers. Narmada and Tapi are the only rivers that flow east to west into the Arabian Sea. If you see, we see here Narmada River and the Tapi River, they flow from here into the Arabian Sea. The island group. An island is a piece of land surrounded by water on all sides. There are many small and large islands along the coastal region of the Indian Peninsula. The islands in the Arabian Sea are known as Lakshwadeep, okay, whereas the islands in the Bay of Bengal are known as Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Lakshwadeep and the Nicobar Islands are of coral origin. That means these are small islands which do not rise very high. 
A coral means a hard substance which is formed from the bones of very small sea animals. Whereas the Andaman Islands are of volcanic origin. The barren islands of, if you see here, the barren islands of Andaman is the only active volcano in India. The Andaman and Nicobar are peaks of mountains, sub, are peaks of submerged mountains. Okay, so these are peaks of submerged mountains. With this, we have come to an end of our today's session. Hope you have understood. Thank you. Stay home. Stay safe.